Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another broadcast of The Weekly with me, Neff. Before I give you guys the information in this very cool article from The Direct, please subscribe to the channel. We are trying to get to our 50th subscriber, and every subscriber and channel share helps us out a lot. So with that being said, this article is titled, Marvel's Thor 5 Movie Needs 10 Things to Recover from Love and Thunder Disaster. This was a really cool article, and I'm going to go through all these points that they make in this article. This article is written by Sam Hargrave. Thor Love and Thunder was undeniably a disaster, but Marvel Studios can avoid its biggest mistakes in 10 ways to make Thor 5 a massive success. The fourth Thor solo outing faced massive criticism from audiences and critics, but its box office success and the lingering popularity of Chris Hemsworth's God of Thunder has fans convinced Thor 5 is still on the cards. There have been many rumors claiming that Thor 5 will release after Love and Thunder teased a battle between Hemsworth's hero and Brett Goldstein's Hercules. Prepare for Thor's farewell. That is the first point they're trying to make here. By the time Avengers Secret Wars rolls around in May 27. Chris Hemsworth will have been playing Thor for 16 years across six ensemble blockbusters and potentially five solo outings. As such, the Australian star may be nearing ready to put down Molinar for good and move on from his MCU era. If Hemsworth were to eye a Secret Wars exit akin to Robert Downey Jr. and Scarlett Johansson in Endgame, Thor 5 must lay the groundwork for his end. Then again, Thor 5 could also release in the second saga and serve as his send-off the way Black Widow did for Johansson after Endgame. This could involve closing out his relationship with the major players from his solo franchise, teasing his spiritual successor and telling a tale with more mature Thor especially as he serves as a father figure to Gore's daughter, Love. On the topic of a spiritual successor to Thor, Love, and Thunder, may have teased just that it is introduced Brett Goldstein as Hercules, the son of Russell Crowe's Zeus from Greek mythology, who is now pursuing the Norse god. After five Thor movies exploring the Norse corner of the MCU, Hercules may be the perfect vehicle to dive into the Greek realm next with a movie series or even a whole franchise that puts Goldstein in the driver's seat. But for that to work, and even for fans to look forward to seeing Hercules as an Avenger, Thor 5 must show him off as a likable and interesting badass who could conceivably lead his own projects. That said, the MCU has some work to do before Hercules can go off to become the avenging hero that comic fans know him to be. As Love and Thunder teased, he will soon fight Thor at the behest of his father Zeus. The MCU has left many dangling threads over the years, especially in recent post credit scenes, and Thor 5 needs to deliver on Love and Thunder's tease-off, a face-off between the Norse god and the Greek gods. Granted, that may end up being for a smaller portion of the tale before Thor and Hercules unite against a bigger threat, perhaps one that threatens both, setting him up to be a hero and possibly join the Avengers one day. While Hercules may offer one path to succeed Thor in the MCU, Marvel Comics does hold another with a character fans have spent years asking for, Beta Ray Bill. For those unaware, Beta Ray Bill is a Corbinite alien with a goat-like appearance who was one of the first outside Thor to wield Mullinor. It was after this rivalry for possession of Mullinor that Beta Ray Bill got a weapon of his own with Stormbreaker, which Thor obtained in the MCU with Endgame. The MCU already teased his existence in Ragnarok as one of the Grand Masters champions and prisoners on Sakaar, but has yet to appear properly. One of the biggest criticisms against Love and Thunder was its humor. Director Taika Waititi brought that humor to the Thor franchise with Ragnarok to great applause, but it largely fell flat in its second go-around. Jokes such as the Screaming Goats, the Thor, Stormbreaker, Melinar, Love Triangles, much of the other humor failed to land with audiences. As such, Thor 5 should greatly cut back on the humor in favor of a tone closer to the God of Thunder's earlier movies. This more serious and grounded tone could open the doors to to deeper character exploration and help prepare Thor's image to become the badass Norse hero he once was. Taiga Watiti may have struck gold or Ragnarok as he took Thor in a new direction with a different tone, characters, and more comedy, but most had grown tired of that shtick, with Love and Thunder leading to massive backlash. As such, most seem to agree that Taika, out to leave his Asgardian days behind to give away a new director for Thor 5, something even Chris Hemsworth seems to want. This would allow a different filmmaker to come in with a fresh perspective, style, and tone to reinvent Thor once more. The likes of Mad Max's George Miller, the Northman's Robert Eggers, and Hellboy's Guillermo del Toro have all been thrown around by fans as filmmakers who could take on Thor 5 and bring something unique 
League to the table. As the fifth entry in the Asgardian franchise will seemingly pit Thor and Hercules and thus send the MCU's Norse and Greek heroes to war, the movie undeniably needs a focus on both grand mythologies. While the MCU's Greek gods were briefly introduced in Thor, Love and Thunder, through Zeus and Hercules, Thor 5 has the opportunity to offer some massive world building to expand on that corner of the pantheon. Thor 5 could even explore the history of these gods in the MCU showing their past with flashbacks to Odin's days and his dynamic with Zeus. Love and Thunder was the first Thor movie to forego Tom Hiddleston's Loki after he was killed by Thanos in Infinity War. As the brotherly dynamic between the pair was such a focus for the Thor franchise, many agree he needs to come back in the next installment, especially with Loki being such a fan favorite character. Marvel Studios production and development executive Kevin Wright previously confirmed to Variety that reuniting Thor and Loki is a priority of the story, suggesting there is a plan to bring the Asgardian brothers back together. While Earth 616's Loki may be dead, the God of Stories version featured in the Disney Plus series is still around watching over the multiverse, or perhaps the original God of Mischief could return via Valhalla. Natalie Portman's Jane Foster may have succumbed to cancer and died at the climax of Love and Thunder, but the post credit scene left things on an interesting note as she was greeted by Heimdall in Valhalla, perhaps hinting at her future. Among the biggest criticisms for Thor 4 were many saying Foster was wasted and given too little to do in Love and Thunder, so it would only be truly worth bringing her back once more if it came with a meaningful arc and important role. That said, Jane Foster's Love and Thunder post credit scene has been interpreted in various ways. While some speculated Marvel Studios was teasing her return in Thor 5, others suggested Taika Waititi may have instead been signifying her cancer death amounted to dying in battle, landing her a place in Valhalla. Around the time Love and Thunder was released, many MCU movies and series were unfortunately facing the same criticisms. Dim-witted humor, rushed storytelling, short run times, lack of direction, and questionable CGI became recurring issues, all of which plagued Thor 4 greatly. Some recent flicks such as Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and Deadpool and Wolverine largely swerve these issues, but they persist in certain projects. While these issues certainly need to be resolved across the board at Marvel Studios, they must be avoided for Thor 5, especially to avoid going back to back with two disasters for the MCU's God of Thunder. Thor 5 has yet to be officially announced by Marvel Studios, but all of Chris Hemsworth's appearances as Thor so far are streaming now on Disney+. Plus. So that wraps up that article, guys. One thing I I will add to that and it's kind of piggybacking on what they talked about as far as the humor goes you need to make Thor serious I know Marvel has a hard time with making movies very seriously because they think that affects their family friendly um, target audience but I think if you do make Thor more serious you can do a lot with the story and I think people will look at it in a different light they had a chance to do it with Gore the God Butcher and they failed miserably on Love and Thunder I did watch Love and Thunder in theaters it's actually the only Thor movie that I've seen in theaters I've seen the other Thor movies but that was the first one I actually watched in theaters and I must say it was a mid-level film at best but the reason why it was a mid-level film is because they did not take the film serious enough and they underused Christian Bale as Gore I feel like you could have used that Gore the God Butcher story in two different films and made it more of a serious toned film there was a lot of things that were dark and a lot of things that were serious about the film but what they did was they piled on the jokes and it made everything serious about the film less impactful overall I can say that Taika Waititi has been fired from Marvel Studios and Lucasfilm so you will not be seeing anything from him anymore from people that I have spoken to just outside of recording and stuff like that real life interactions people like Thor Ragnarok so it's weird how it didn't really work out for Love and Thunder but like I said Love and Thunder needed to have a more serious tone and they just threw in too many jokes, threw in too many jokes and it affected the quality of the movie overall. So with that being said, that is a list of things that this article really points out that could actually make Thor 5 good that they need to work on. I have pointed out what I think needs to happen. Like I said, I think overall the film just needs to take a more serious tone. And if they lean in with that, I think people will look at Thor in a more serious light and you could build it up so that it actually connects very well with Avengers Doomsday and Secret Wars because I think those films are going to have a very serious tone to them. But we have yet to see. I think they need to kind of return back to that Thor dark world realm. I think that would really help Thor overall at this point and it would make people forget about Love and Thunder. Recency bias is a real thing. So with that being said, guys, comment down below. Have you seen Thor Love and Thunder? Have you seen the Thor films? What did you think about those films and what do you think about Thor 5? Are you anticipating it? Definitely want to know what you think about that article and what you think about Thor overall. With that being said, guys, like, subscribe, share with a friend, ring the bell for notifications, and as always, be safe. It's Neff signing off.